All right, so let's start by taking a look at that homework. How many of you are able to do the homework without any trouble? Well, like about a, not even a quarter of you. How many of you haven't tried it yet because it's not due till tonight? Oh, okay, you'll be rewarded today. How many of you spent more than an hour working on it? Ready? No. Were you raising your hand? No? That's right. All right, go to the web query. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can find that page. Hopefully this link is working now. It's the same thing it did here last week. Can you get to that link okay? Is it only me who gets redirected to Learning Suite when I follow that link? What's that? I had to copy and paste it, then log in, then go back into the code. Oh, so what you said, copy this. Yeah, copy that link, then I had to paste it in the browser, then I had to send it in, then I had to go back. All right, we'll give it a shot. Log in. I should be able to log in. Probably the right password there. Then it takes you to where you last were. Go back to that link again. Okay. So create a web query. This, folks, all you're doing is making a web query. There's no VBA involved. The whole idea here is really that, you know, you've thought about this before class so that by the time we get here, we can just kind of dive in and do some stuff with the web query. But things have gone hinky. Microsoft has done some weird things with the web query, so we're going to spend some time with it today anyway. Create a web query. That's a great place. I'll save it. Now maybe I could just open it. Okay, so I guess the first thing that I want to look at with this is just kind of how these assignments work. Enable editing. Probably have to enable macros. Oh, maybe not. You've got a tab up here called assignment, the assignment tab. This gives you the tools that you need to be able to work on the assignment. The instruction sheet will show you the instructions. Here it is. Create a web query. It's worth 10 points. How many points are there in this whole semester? I, really? I thought it was 1,000. Anyway, we'll take a look. Anyway, it's a bunch of points. But, you know, this is, this is a... Ah! Okay, it's like as soon as I scroll, it goes away. Create a web query to retrieve a quote from the founding fathers at this website. Okay, so that's all we have to do. We're just making a web query. So I'm going to come back to Excel here, and I got to go. Which so here we are. Here. Thank you. Okay, so folks, this is not too tough. I'm going to come here to data. Now, I've got this section over here called Get and Transform. Here's new query. This is like to do a web query. I'm going to click on that, and that's not what I expect. Oh, no, it's over here. Under Get external data from web. Oh, good heavens. Good. Oh, this is wonderful. So this computer, which has been sitting in my bag since, like, last semester, hasn't been updated to the most recent copy of Windows or most recent copy of Excel. How many of you, when you hit new web query, you get this? How many of you getting something totally different? Totally different is good, because totally different is where we're going. If you're getting this, stick with me, because we've got to go a different direction to get to where I want you to go. You could, okay, let me, let me, let me go over this again. So I'm on the data tab. For years, Microsoft has been developing a thing called Power Query. It used to be called Power Query. Now it's just called Query. They, they, it, they were just building this kind of new set of tools to be able to import data into Excel. And then recently, like the whole, like, like the update hasn't even rolled out to everybody yet. They said, okay, we're just going to move the Power Query tools into be the normal way that just, just call it Query. Now it's just going to be the normal way we get data. And so, if you have the older version, as it is on this machine, if you come to the Get External Data group and from web, you get this tool called the new, the new Web Query tool. And it is, it really is like a little browser. I can't even move it now. It's a little browser. It's a really bad browser. It, it doesn't do well with ActiveScript. Um, you know, if you've got like active content like JavaScript or whatever there, it throws errors like crazy. And I kept hoping they would fix it. And they never fixed it. They just got rid of it. But they haven't gotten rid of it for 
you yet, some of you, okay? So we're not going to do this approach. If, if you hit that new query and it brings you up something much smaller that just says put a URL in, yeah. that's where you want to be. Okay. I'm going to show the rest of you how to get there. Because you can get there, it's just they've, they've kind of changed things around. So I'm going to cancel this. And again, on the data tab, there's a group now here to the right of your get external data. And I've kind of zoomed in my, my uh, resolution so you can see it. So this group doesn't even show out here. But to the right of that first group, you should have this thing here called new query. And there, there should be something here called from. OK, let me find other sources here. I hear you. I'm just going to, OK. Down. To the right. Oh, from other sources, there it is. You see, it was right there in front of me all the time. <laughs> from web. That's the one we're looking for. Ah, so you should all be able to get here, either because you chose the from web that's in that first group, or because you went to new query from other sources and then from web. Whew. Are we all here now? Anyone not here who wants to be here? Even older than this? 2007? Yeah. Update, my friend. It's free. So just go to office.byu.edu. You could probably do it right here in class. OK. Uh, yeah, the 2007 version does not have this, doesn't have this tool. There's another question over here. You want to see it one more time? Yeah. I want to see it one more time, too, because I couldn't even see it when I was looking at it. <laughs> Data. New query. Other sources from web. And, and this is the same tool that is now promoted into the just, this is how you get data from the web period. This is the way it comes in. It is more stable and it is more capable, but it's not quite as friendly as the old one. Both for just doing it as well as for recording it. What it records isn't quite as nice. So well, we're not recording anything now, we're just making the query. So from web, I'm going to put a URL in. What does the assignment say to put in for the URL? Foundingquotes.blogspot.com. I'm trying to copy that. Copy. Paste. The HTTPS. Okay, you can type it in just like me. HTTPS colon slash slash founding hyphen quotes, right? Yeah. Dot blogspot dot com. Oh. Uh, I think the forward slash is probably not necessary on the end. So it's a beautiful site that I made in Blogger last week because I thought it would be fun to have something that would just refresh. So here's from Noah Webster on Virtue. who refreshed the page, F5. Should bring somebody else. John Adams on the judiciary. George Washington on commerce. Hmm. Harmony. Liberal intercourse with all nations. Very good. Religious liberty. Whatever. They keep coming. The whole point is just to have something that we can have data there that I know will change when you refresh it. So that when the grader tries to figure out, are, do you have this done, it, will, it, can, it can refresh and go, oh, yeah, it's changed. So we'll say, OK. It's then going to make the request for that page that we put in, the URL. And it's asking some kind of anonymous access. Yeah, that's fine, connect. I don't know what that means. <laughs> now, so it's got the page, and it's done a little analysis on it. You can come over here to the web view on this, and it might show you something that looks like the page. It might not. How many of you get here and it doesn't, doesn't show you this part? Anyone? What does it say? Oh, really? That's okay. We don't need this part. That's just to show you that it's there. I'm going to come back to table view. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ta no item selected here, but you've got the web view tab up here to kind of look at the page. Okay, so, folks, I've got to tell you, this part over here is not especially friendly. You say document, like you think this is the whole document? No, that's all it is. It's like some description about the document. It's utterly worthless. I've never seen, you know, I've tried lots of different pages. 
I clicked on document and I've never found anything interesting there. There may be something great and powerful I don't know about, but forget that one. I'm going to go to table zero and that's going to bring in that, that table. It's defined by the HTML table. That's the structure of that page. There it is. Great. We are now just going to click on load and it will make a new sheet. So put sheet two and it put that query right here on that sheet. And it really, it's a query, right? And it's done. So I can right click this now and choose refresh and it should pull another request from that page. If I come up here to my data tab, there's a refresh all, it should do the same thing for me. That's it. That's all we're doing on the homework. Should I grade it right now? What's that? Oh, thank you. There's another instruction. What was the instruction? It has to be quotes. Yeah, better make sure you get the, that. was there anything, maybe I should go check the instructions one more time. It's a good idea to actually read the instructions. Should return a quote into A1 to A5, great. Change the name of the sheet to quotes, no VBA necessary. Okay, great, so now I think we've done the assignment. I'm gonna to come to assignment and submit. It's gonna say, great, who are you? So these are whatever credentials you set up your My Educator account with. I don't know if my student account is here. Let me my professor account. Gov at BYU. I'm going to say OK. It should go through. Oh, it recognized me as the professor, so it looks a little different for me. I'll just go ahead and grade it. The results will probably come up differently. It might try to reroute you to my educator to see the results. Is that what it does? Or does it show this? It really doesn't like me to do a two-finger scroll on this. And here, then, it tells me, great, 10 out of 10. That's 100% for the assignment. If I had gotten less, if there was something I didn't like, it would have told me what it didn't like. Got some points off. I didn't like it because of this. And remember, you get another shot at doing the homework. That's about how hard a homework assignment is supposed to be. A little challenging because I couldn't find from other sources, but. Questions? So you get two tries? Two tries, yeah. If you get 100% on the first try, that's enough. Stop. You don't have to do the second one. One's enough. Cecil, you got the Packers hat on again. Packers are playing playing Cincinnati here pretty soon, aren't they? I guess so. All right. So being able to do a web query in the way that we just did it is going to be necessary for the first project. So what we're going to do today is going to be a whole lot like what your first project is going to be. We're going to record it. We're going to record a query. Uh, we're going to record a macro, and then we're going to have to modify it so that you know it does what we want it to do. We can bend it to our will. Here's the idea. Uh, let's just go ahead and do an example. Okay, so cancel, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna open up a brand new, I'm gonna open a brand new worksheet. In fact, I think I already have one open. Do you wanna save this? Sure. Close the founding quotes, okay. Oh, here's book one, brand new book one. Yes. If that's the case, either see a TA or come see me in my office. And uh, yeah, the, the whole point is I want you to engage the material at some point. And so, you know, if you've done that, especially on this one, I'll look at it and go, great, full credit. We'll just give you the credit. For it. Oh, folks, so let me kind of give you, here's the theory on, the, on, this, on this homework. The dean asked me years ago, Professor Allen, he doesn't call me Professor Allen, he calls me my first name, Gov. A strange name, I know. Find out a way to teach more students this VBA class. We teach it in small sections because it was a lot of homework to grade. You had to go through it by hand. So I developed this way to be able to do the grading automatically. Is it perfect? Not by a long shot. So, you know, here's the idea. You're going to grade it. If you're happy with the grade, great. If you're not, come see me. You know, because the grader did its best job, but it's not, it's, it's, it's cold and heartless and uncaring. I'm benevolent and, and loving and fatherly. 
And so, you know, I'll, I'll look at it and go, yeah, you know, it took off more. You didn't quite get it 100%, but it took off like 50% for what you did. You should, you should get more. And so, you know, it, you can always come and see me and say, hey, do you really think that the grader took off the right amount of points for this? Because sometimes a really small mistake, conceptual mistake, can like completely wipe out the grader's ability to, to give you any credit. So always feel free to come see me or the TAs, uh, and they'll make, we'll make adjustments. Okay, was there other questions here? Or was it all kind of on that? All right. So now here's the idea. Let's, let's just, we're starting with a blank workbook. Oh, and let's start off by saving it. I'm not sure we talked about this. I'm gonna choose File Save. I've got a brand new workbook. I'll give it a place. I'll probably put it on my desktop, that'll be fine. Ah, but here's the important part. Whenever I create a macro, whenever I put VBA code into my workbook, I have to save it in a way that specifically allows it to save the code. And the default approach here, XLSX workbook, no code involved. In fact, we go back to the 1990s when they invented VBA and put it into Excel. Any old workbook could have VBA in it. <clears throat> and actually, in the late 90s, the most pervasive and most damaging viruses in the world were macro viruses. They weren't even really viruses. It's just like a VBA program that when you open Excel, it would automatically run some VBA, it would infect a bunch of stuff, and it would you know, email your neighbors. It would do kind of crazy things like that. <laughs> and you know, Microsoft just really struggled with how are we going to you know, kind of lock this down and make the environment secure. And so in 2007, one of the things they did was they said, listen, two separate file extensions. If it ends with .xlsx, no VBA, no questions. You open a file that says XLSX, there's no VBA in it. And, and they got that really good. I mean, what would happen if you made an XLSM file, which we'll see in a minute, which can hold a macro, and then you went and changed the file name to XLSX? Could you do that? Yeah, you could do that. And when Excel opened it, it would go, I don't think so. It says it's an XLSX, but there's a macro in it. It, it won't even load it. And so, so that's the thing. So you've got to, when you save, you've got to, you, you've got to know enough to say, let's save this as a macro-enabled workbook. Uh, and I think I'll just call this, I'll call it stock data. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care what I call it. Call it something. I like to do that first because if we don't do that first, what will happen is, guaranteed, we'll get to the end of the class and they'll be like, oh yeah, save. And you'll be like, oh man, I'm done with class today. I'm totally getting out of here. And it'll put up some kind of message. It'll say to you, you know, you're trying to save this workbook as an XLS section. You're going to lose all your macros. But are you going to read that? No. You're going to accept the default, which is going to dump off all your macros. And you wonder, hey, what happened to all that work? So make sure we get that taken care of first. All right. So now here's the idea. I want to just have an arbitrary list of stock tickers. I'm just going to um, put ticker right here and sell A1, T I C K E R. And then we'll put some stocks here. Apple, A-A-P-L, Google, G-O-O-G, Microsoft. MSFT, Oracle, ORCL, whoops, ORCL, uh, who else do we have? American Express, AXP, ExxonMobil, XOM, Ford and GM, that's enough. Exactly what the tickers are doesn't matter, as long as they're real tickers. What we're not going to do today is learn how to say, well, you put in a bad ticker, it didn't bring back any data, and, and to have your code recover from that. So if you put in something there that's not a ticker, this code's going to fail, and that's okay for today. Now what I'd like to do is I would like to bring in the P-E ratio. And earnings per share for these. And whether I have eight stock tickers or 800 stock tickers, I don't care. By the time we're done today, I want to be able to say, Get this data. You know, it's like Excel is going to be my own little information slave. I'm going to tell it, go get this data. And don't stop until you're done. I'm going to get a ham sandwich. And, you know, Excel is going to be thrilled. Yeah, I'd love to do it. And so that's, that's what we're after. It's kind of nice about having a computer for a slave. You know, they don't have any feelings. They don't have any rights. <laughs> it's different than slavery in the 18th century or the 17th century. Humans and everything. Mm. All right, so what I'd like to do is I would like to record myself 
doing a web query to bring this data in and then modify it so that it can work over and over and over again. Um, back before they switched to this new web query that we just did, this code was really easy. We had to make like one tiny little change to what we recorded to get it working. This is going to be a little more involved for us to get this going now, but it's a kind of a great, powerful technique that we're going to see today. You ready? So I want to, any time I'm recording a macro, before I start, I want to think two things. Number one, when the user runs this macro, where should the active cell be? Active cell's got to be somewhere. So where do we want the user to start off with the active cell? In this case, what would you think? What's a good, what's a good idea? So yeah, I, I, think, I think any one of these, any ticker symbol is okay. In fact, that's the way we're going to allow the user to, to cue to us that which ticker they want the data for. Select it. Okay. So let's say I'm going to start, let's say I'll start in, oh, you know what? I left off my favorite one. Southwest Airlines. Let's put Southwest Airlines in. <sighs> Feel the love for Southwest. <sighs> so I'm going to start in A2. Now, where do I want to end up? That's the second thing I want to ask. When, I'm, when, when, when the macro's finished running, where should the active cell leave off? Where do you think it should leave off? There's a, there's a, there's a couple reasonable things here. What do you think? Where it started. Okay, maybe right exactly where it started. That's like, okay, that's, that's a reasonable thing. We got some data, we left right where we started. What else might be a good place to go? Okay, so one right down to the next ticker. I like that one because now I'm ready to run it again. I can just, you know, run it again, run it again. You know, the other possible option, you know, might be on, you know, especially if I'm only getting one piece of data, it might be it actually be on the data that I retrieve. I like this idea though. So we're going to start here on A2, and we're going to leave off on A3. And so once I've thought through that, I'm ready to start recording. And so I'm going to come to my whew, developer tab, or right down here, can you see, does it show the little... So right down here, once you've got the developer tab open, you've got a little, you can just start recording right here. Or you can go to the developer tab. I've got my, maybe I should just leave that open. <clears throat> and we can use, we can choose record macro up here, which I'll go ahead and do. But I just want to make sure that everyone's got their developer tab showing. Is there anyone who's missing the developer tab? Got it all? Great. So record macro. It's going to start recording. I got to give it a name. I'm going to call this stock data. What's the temptation for a hot for a shortcut key? Control S. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I got to tell you on Control S. Little story. So before I before I got my PhD, I did corporate training. I went around the country teaching you know companies how to do various information technology things. And VBA was one of the things I taught. And uh, I was teaching a class one day. It was a class of about 12 people, small, generally small classes. You know, you got a computer there in front of everybody. And there was a guy who sat in the back of the class. He always had some kind of comment to make about everything. You know, he thought they were terribly funny. None of the rest of the class did. And uh, I had just gone over something that was like how to close the active workbook and save the changes without prompting the user. You know, so you get some code going along. Just close and save and, and done. And he asked, and how would you change that code so it would close the active workbook without saving the changes, without prompting the user? You know, and it's like, you know, there's, there's no good. There's no, there, you can do no good with that code. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like changing one parameter from false to true, or from true to false. And so I told him, and you know, we kind of went on. About five minutes later, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? He said, I just wrote a macro that closed the active workbook without saving the change, without prompting the user, and I assigned a shortcut key of control F. <laughs> okay, that was a little funny. Like a couple hours later, like, okay, let's break for lunch. It's a good time to save your work. And he goes, huh, 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 what, huh? <laughs> so, so be careful. All right. I'll put capital S in control shift S. Uh, we talked about the different places and whatever. I'll put a little description in here. Get, ooh, 
get a PE ratio and EPS from Yahoo. By the way, you know where the, where the name of the company Yahoo comes from? You know what classical author that comes from? Don't. Jonathan Swift from Gulliver's Travels. Have you read it? Have you read it? <sighs> the classics just aren't appreciated anymore. Anyway, there's a group of people called Yahoos there. And the founders of the company consider themselves Yahoos, and so they named the company Yahoo. All right. We'll say OK. OK, so I'm going to start off now just by doing the web query. So come to my data tab. And who new query from other sources from web. Or if you're you know, in the newer group, just over there you've got just uh, from web. I think you've got as a, as a choice out there in front. The same way that we did the query earlier. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? I forgot to get the ticker. Let's go get it. Let's go get the URL. So I'm going to come to finance.yahoo.com. I'm just on a browser now. We'll leave the recorder. By the way, is the recorder doing recording anything we're doing right now? No. no. It's just recording what happens in Excel. So finance.yahoo.com. There should be a place to do a lookup over here somewhere. I don't want to do a search. There's like a specific, like a quote somewhere. Unless they've changed in the past week. There it is. Quote lookup. Bloop. Southwest Airlines LUV. Uh, and so it brings in, you know, various information for Southwest Airlines. And here's the price earnings ratio and the earnings per share right down here. So this is a good page. I think this page might be able to get the information that I'm after. Now, as I'm looking at this URL. This URL looks a little bit odd. What do you think looks odd about this? What do you think I think? What do you think I might feel is odd about this URL? Question mark. Question mark is normal. Question mark says. In fact, let's just let's just let's just go over the little different blocks of the URL. The first one's a protocol. It tells the browser how to communicate with the server. This next part up to the first slash is the host. This is getting me to the right machine. Everything else, all these slashes now, until I get to the question mark, is getting me to the right location on that machine. The question mark says everything after this is information that's getting passed to its parameters. It's data that we're giving to whatever resource we've identified up to here. And it's going to know what to do with it. So the, the question mark just says, here's some, here's some parameters, some data that we're going to pass in. So the question mark's OK. And this way parameters work. It's a name equals something. And so that's OK. This part that, that yeah, go ahead. The question you asked before, what's odd about it? Yeah. So it says HTTPS, but there's no like indication that it's actually secure. Is that what you're looking for? That's not what I was looking for. But yeah, if it says HTTPS here, I'm comfortable that it's secure. But would I normally see a lock or something here in my Chrome? And yeah, I don't know. It's that it says it's it's like there's way too much love in this URL. It's like twice as much love as we need. I think. Why does it say as a parameter? Does it give me the ticker? And does it show here? <clears throat> so the first thing that you're going to get comfortable with, you know, when you're starting to, to work with web queries and, and data, is you're going to start playing with the URL. What happens if I get rid of this last, this last love? If I just leave it off right there? And the answer is, it like takes me to exactly the same place. I don't know what that's good for, but I like it better with only one love in there. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to plug. I'm going to plug that in for my my URL in my little query environment. Yeah. So should we always look for redundancies within the? Should you always look for redundancies? It turns out redundancies are really weird. They're un it's very unusual. So no, I would say no. It just turns out that you know I saw both of those there, and I know that what we're going to have to do in code is we're going to have to modify the code to put a ticker symbol in because we don't always want Southwest Airlines. This is going to record a query for Southwest Airlines. I'm going to have to modify that. So I just thought, I don't want to have to modify it in both places. Would it work if I had just the one? And it turns out that it does. Question here. You can't do like a quote equal G1 exclamation point, like A2, in, from web. Like, you can't do that in the URL. 
floor out of what we got up right now? Yeah, hey, that's a that's a really good question. And clearly in the old web query wizard, not a chance. In this one, I've never tried that. It's a new wizard. I would be shocked if that worked. Um, so shocked, I'm not even going to try it. So I'm going to say no, you can't. <laughs> we can try it later if you want. We'll say okay. Should go ahead and, and pull that page in. Um, which level connects? The only thing I want to try there. I don't know. What that's like. uh, I guess I have the ability to do some kind of authentication here, which is you know part of the thing that's, that's new about the Web Query Wizard to be able to have authentication. But we're just going to start here. Okay, so here we've got a couple of tables of data that we can pull in. Previous close, the bid-ask spread, and so forth. And then table one, that's what I'm after. It's got the earnings per share and the price-earnings ratio. So it's right there. That looks great. So I'm going to select table one here. Did that come up for everybody? Still loading for some of you? We'll let it load. And for a while, we don't want to go too fast for the connection. Oh, really? So it's the week after. Not this week, but the week after. Yeah, I opened up something, Edge or something, and it was on some Microsoft page, and it showed the Packers playing Cincinnati, and I thought of Cecil. So, yeah. Is it just looking for the table keyword in the HTML and then putting it? Is that the way it's doing that? Yeah, so the question is, hey, how is it, how does it, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of data on this page, and we don't have access to all of it. How does it know what to get? And it definitely will show the tables. Uh, I think it will also show data that's organized to be in a table, even though it may not use the table tag. So you can build tables with divs, is a different, another kind of tag that you can kind of build a table structure with. Uh, and this is, this is, the, the, this is the, the least satisfying thing or the most unsatisfying thing about this new query environment for me is that so far I haven't found a way to say just bring in all of the data. Just bring it all. Whatever's on that page, just bring it in and dump it on the worksheet, which you used to be able to do in the old one, which was... Nice. There may be a way to do that. I just haven't found it yet. But for this example, we're going to be okay doing this. We're, anyone still waiting for it to load? Really, a bunch of us. Well, let's see. I can tell you about the time I saw the Cincinnati Bengals play football. I was 10. It's actually the only professional football game I have ever been to. It was on Sunday. My grandfather took me. And the whole time, I thought, we're breaking the Sabbath. And this is really, really boring. Anyway. Yeah, we get off script in this class, and you know, don't expect it to be that thrilling. <laughs> okay, we're going to go forward. Hopefully you're, you're there. Okay. So I'm going to click on load now. We're going to see that it's going to create a new sheet. It's going to bring that query on. It'll take a minute to do this. And so... Ultimately, what I'm going to want to do is I don't want to be creating a new web query each time I want that data. What I, the target, my goal, what I want to do here is I want to be able to say, all right, I've got that web query there. I want to use VBA to change that web query to say, don't go after Southwest Fairlight, not go after Apple or after Google or after whichever one I had selected. And then just refresh that query and then let me get the data. Because if I just record myself, you know, just play back what I just recorded, it's going to try to create a new web query each time. And if it would do that, it's like every time I run it, my workbook would get bigger and bigger and bigger. It creates a new web query object and puts it in the workbook. Another, and another one, another one. And so I'm going to want to avoid that. Oh, look, it's right in here. Okay, I'm still recording. So knowing in my mind that what I'm going to want to do is be able to refresh, change the query and refresh it, I am going to just, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this query right now. So I'm going to select one. I'm going to, I want to actually make sure I select a cell. So, and I can select any cell in the, the results of this query. I think A1 was already selected, so any other cell. And then I'm going to right click that and choose refresh. Now, I don't really need to refresh this now for my own purposes, right? Because I just barely got the data. You know, well, it might have changed, but the markets are closed now, so it really hasn't changed. But I'm trying to record the instruction that says refresh, because I'm going to want that. So I'll refresh, 
And it will now, we'll see the line that it recorded for, for refreshing that as well. You can kind of notice over here, we've got one query over here. And in fact, when I refreshed it, it was like, said it was loading over there and so forth. Now it's created the sheet called sheet two. Again, we'll see the line that creates that sheet. I don't want to create a new sheet every time. I've got a very nice query sitting right here. And so I'm going to change the name of this sheet. I'll call it web query. And now I'm going to select my price earnings ratio and my earnings per I'll do them one at a time. I'll select my price earnings ratio and I'll copy it. Now I'm going to click back on sheet one. Probably should have named that before we got here, darn it. I'll leave it named sheet one. Now, here I've got some trouble. What was the cell I selected? B. B. It was B1. B1 at the top. Anyway, whatever I selected. When I selected that cell, it recorded select that particular cell, B4 or whatever it was. I'm in trouble here because if I click on B2 right now, what's it going to record? Select B2. Do I want it to select B2? Well, this time I do, but when I get to Google, I don't. What do I want it to select for Google? B3, yeah. I want it to select the next cell over from wherever my active cell is. So just as in formulas in Excel, there's a notion of an absolute reference versus a relative reference. There's the same notion in recording a macro. When I do the next activity of selecting something, is it going to select the, is it going to record that activity as absolutely what it selected? Or will it record it as a relative offset from where the active cell is? Which one do we want? Relative. relative. Fortunately, right here on our developer tab, there's a little button, use relative references. And I can turn that on and off as I go. So I'll click use relative references. And so now, when I make the next activity, it'll record this relative, the, the move relative to the active cell. Question? Yeah, go ahead and click back onto A2, and then click to relative references, and then click B2 again. And, and actually, I think Excel, the recorder's going to be smart enough to go, oh, you didn't really select B2. And so... Oh, but we'll have the select A2 line. We'll have, to, we'll have to edit that. We'll Remind us when we get there, and I'll help you with that one. So then go ahead and, and use relative references, and now select B2, and now paste. I'm going to click back on my web query. Now, I'm still on relative references. How do I feel about that? Should I switch it back, or am I okay with a relative reference here? I'm probably okay. One cell down, I think it's going to be there. Select that one, copy, go back to my sheet one, select one over and paste, still on relative, paste. Okay, so I got the data I'm after, am I done? One more thing I gotta do before I finish, what is it? Yeah, take, take me to where I want to leave off. So I'm on relative references, so I'll just go back over there. By the way, any, any interim moves I make, you know, I could like be clicking over here, click on, you know, G, whatever, H, you know, I1. All of these, it's like going, oh, you want to go there? Okay. Oh, you want to go here? Oh, you didn't really want to go to the last place, and it like forgets that one. So I'm selecting all these different places, and it's only ultimately going to remember my last move because it's smart enough to go, going over there and selecting it and not doing anything, that's a waste of effort. I mean, it's an information slave, but you know, doesn't want to just you know, do work for no reason, and so we'll forget that part. So we'll stop recording. Question? So if you didn't have No. So the question is, well, can I just hit the right arrow key, and would that record relative? That would be so fabulous if that if it would do that. But the answer is no. It would record. Oh, you just selected that cell, and it would it would select. It would record select B two. Question: As I run it, run the macro, it says. Wait, you're running the macro already? Or are you recording it? I can stop recording. I'm just going to test it. It's going to work for the next the next sticker. <sighs> Don't do that. Well, I didn't work. I was going to say. Yeah. What's that? It's a query with the name table one already exists. Yeah. Yeah, we have work to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Query. Say, say, the, say the error again. Uh, a, a query? A, a query with the name. And okay, you're in good shape. That means the first thing that you tried to do failed, and that's good because you don't want to be creating extra queries. Let's take a look at the code before we, we, before we run it and um, kind of talk through what it's recorded and what we don't want to have happen because that's what we don't. We tried to do something we didn't want to have happen. Okay, Alt F11 will take me to my code or you can always choose the list of macros, find the macro and choose edit. That will take me not just over to my Visual Basic editor, but it will take me to my editor and it will take me right into that, into that procedure. So here's stock data, we're ready to go. Oh, folks, I tried and tried and tried to figure out how to make this font bigger. The best I could do is make it blacker. Is that readable for you? I hear several people whispering it, that you stopped recording prior to that, right? Oh, I thought you meant the video that we're recording. We're still recording the video. I, I did stop recording the macro. Right. So we're, we're stopped recording. So if you haven't stopped recording, go back and stop recording. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close my immediate window. We may come back to it. If you have it open, you can leave it open. I'm just looking for a little more space here. All right, so here's my sub procedure. Get stock data, or it's called stock data. It tells me I put control shift S on it. Here then is the very first thing we did. Remember our first activity was to go to that data tab and start doing the web query. And so here it is. A couple of things we need to look at here. First of all, is that this is one statement that goes across two lines. And so we are adding a new query into the active workbook. So remember that the way this language works, we've got an object. What's an object? <coughs> Object's a thing. Objects have two characteristics that we're very interested in. One is called a attribute. property. Attribute would be, I don't know way to think of it, but we call it property. And the other one is, and property is just a value that describes the way the object is. The other thing we're really interested in is called a method, and a method is an action that the object knows how to do. And so what we have here is we have an object, the active workbook. Can you figure out what object that is? It's the workbook that's currently active. Kind of, this is very important because if I run this macro, I might want this macro to run in this workbook, or I might want it to run in whatever workbook is active. Which one do you think for this macro makes more sense? I don't know. I, mean, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense for me to say, you know, anytime I'm on a stock ticker in any workbook, I want to be able to press Control Shift F and S and have it put the price earnings ratio and the earnings per share right next to it. So probably this workbook would be better. It recorded an active workbook. It had to choose something. So we could leave it like this. It's probably Probably we should. Or we could tell it, no, no, not the active workbook, you know, this workbook. And it actually is this workbook, spelled out, this workbook, just like active workbook, that's what it'd be. But I'm gonna leave this as active workbook, that's fine. And we'll just run with one workbook open. That's the object, it has a property called queries. It's the collection of all of the queries that are in this workbook. It doesn't matter what kind of query it is. It could be a web query, it could be a query to a database, it could be some other kind of query I don't know about. And it's all, they're all in this one collection. It is itself an object. So we have an object that has a property called queries, and that's an object itself. So I can have a dot after that, and then something else. Add. What do you think add is? Do you think it's a method, or do you think it's a property? It's a method. The collection of queries, the queries object, knows how to add a new query. I gotta give it some information. Specifically, I gotta give it a name, and I gotta give it a formula. I give it those two things, it knows how to make the query. And so the name here, it's given it as table one. That's a great name. We're going to leave the name. You might want to change it later in life, but today we're going to leave it the way it is. Now, when you ran this macro again and it gave you an error, you said, I'm going to add this query. Oh, and in fact, it may have added the query. Go back here, do this. Go back and look at your sheet. Do you have two queries showing over here or just one? Just one. Just one. Okay, so it failed before it actually created it. <clears throat> so what happened is it's trying to create it and give it the name table one. What's wrong with that? There's already one called table one. It's not gonna let you have two with the same name. So that's why you got the error. And so we have two options here. One, we could say, well, we either want to give it a different name so we can make another query, or we don't want to make a new query at all. We want to modify this query. And I think I would prefer just modify this query. Now, depending on what we're doing with it, 
we might want to have multiple queries you know, up so that we could say refresh all and it would bring them all in, but we're going to do just one. So we'll make a change there, but not quite yet. So the other thing that I want to point out here is that the macro recorder does this quite often. It says, you know, this line is getting pretty long. In, in, in many programming languages, you've got to put some symbol at the end of the statement to say, hey, I'm done with this statement. It's usually a semicolon. You know, type it along, I'm done with the statement, put a semicolon. When they made the basic language in the 1970s, they thought, you know what? Just put one statement on a line, no special character needed. To, and just, just the end of the line, the end of the statement. The whole idea was to try to make the language simple. And that's okay. But, but now, what if we have a line that's so long, we really want to put it onto mul a statement that's so long, we want multiple lines. Well, instead of knowing when the statement's done with a, with a statement termination character, now we have to say we have to know when it's not done with a line continuation character, and that's what the underscore is. So if you have a space underscore, that says, hey, same statement, continuing on the next line. So this is all one long statement. In fact, if you wanted to delete that underscore and, and delete a little bit more and bring that whole statement up onto one line, you could do that. In fact, it seems a little bit weird because if you look at this, it's a really long line anyway. You know, couldn't you have put some more line continuations in there? Yeah. Somebody wrote the macro recorder to do it that way. You know, they could have done it better. Maybe it was an intern who did it. Could have been. Okay. And so the two pieces of information that we need while we're adding this query is we need to know the name, to name the query, and then this formula. This formula is more than I want to bite off today. But if we scroll over just a little bit, we're going to see what we have to change about it. Can you see it? The problem here is that the computer is, is you can see it right here. The computer is looking for... Yeah, it's kind of sad. Poor computer. <laughs> Looking for love. <laughs> okay. So the jokes, folks. <clears throat> so we're going to have to make that modification. The rest of this is going to be just fine. That's the only difference. We're going to tell it, hey, go to a different URL to pull the information in. All right. So that's kind of what we have here. Let's go ahead and modify this first line to change the query instead of to create a query. Here's a neat thing. When I have a collection of things, as the queries collection is, I can say, you know, add a new one, or I can say, you know, there's a potload of these, there's a bunch of them. And I'm going to put some spaces right before that dot add, because that's kind of where I'm working, is I can tell it inside of parentheses which one I want. You know, just like down here, we've seen this before uh, somewhere, like when we're, ah! when I do a, a two-finger scroll, i got to remember not to do that. Okay, like here, sheets. Out of all the sheets, this is the collection of all the sheets in the workbook. Which one do I want? The one named sheet two. So if I was going to try to refer to this query, how would I do it? Okay, so out of all the queries, which one am I after? Table one. Table one. Yeah, it's name. It's not a great name. And I don't think it's case sensitive, but I'm going to go ahead and make it the case match anyway, just in case. So now what I have here is I have a reference to, not to the collection of queries, but to a particular one of those query things that we just created when we ran this the first time. Now, I, I don't need to change the name because it's already named, but I do need to change the formula. And so I am going to just delete everything up to where it says formula and put a dot in front of it. So I've now identified I've identified the object that I'm interested in. It's the, it's the query name, table one. And now I want to modify one of the properties of this object. What's the property? Formula. formula. Yeah. The formula that's there is a, it's a fine formula. I don't have to deal with it too much. But I'm going to have to make the change to tell it not, not love, but whatever ticker is in the active cell. Now here's a little bit of a weird thing, is that when I'm passing information to a method, I use this symbol between the property or, or the name of the value that I'm sending and the name. I put colon equals. But when I'm just changing it, it's just going to be an equal sign. So I'm going to get rid of that colon as well. It's a lot to bite off on our first day. I'm going to get rid of that colon. So I'm just going to say I want the formula to equal something new. And it's going to, if I left it just like this, this would, this would work. It would change the formula to exactly what it is already. So let's just kind of look at this formula. We're going to look at it for, for its syntax, not for its semantics. I just want to kind of look at how this thing is built. It starts here with a double quote. 
In fact, if we look at these, this little part right here, quote, L-E-T, quote. What we're seeing here, the part I have highlighted right here, is what we call a string literal. It's just a collection of characters. The VBA interpreter, the part that looks at VBA and figures out what to do, it, it looks at all these lines and it, has to, it, it tries to figure out what it means. It looks at that word active workbook and it, and it goes, active workbook, that sounds so familiar. I wish I had studied more in college. What's the active workbook? And it goes, is it, is it, is it, the, name of, uh, is it the name of a program? No, it's not. It's not the application. Is it, what is it, is it, is it a worksheet name? Is it, is it one of my objects? Oh, it's one of the objects. Okay, I, I, I figured it out. That's an object referring to this workbook. And then it goes dot queries, and it tries to figure out what is dot queries, and it looks around and goes, oh yeah, that's a collection for a worksheet. I know what that is. And then it, and then you know, kind of has to figure out all this stuff. Now, when we're when we're trying to tell it, here's a collection of characters. I just want you to hold on to VBA. Don't try to understand it. It's just a collection of characters. Don't try to figure out what it's a part of or what it means to you. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a collection of characters. The way I do that is by putting it in double quotes. It's called a string literal. It's a string of characters. It's not a variable. It's not an object. It's just a collection of characters. And that's what we have here. So it's going to be composing up this formula. as one long collection of characters, but it's going to do it in different parts. So it's going to start off with let. Uh, and then these two characters. How are, you, how are your minds? Are you okay? Can you, take, can you bite off something else? Or should I say, ignore this. We'll talk about it later. Let me go over it. I'm going I'm to hit it really briefly. We'll talk about it in more detail later. So it turns out these two characters are, are, are what it takes to, to tell it when you're printing out text to go down a line and move backwards to the beginning of the line. It's a carriage return and a line feed character. It goes way back to the early days when we're controlling printers and we're actually sending it a signal that says advance the paper and then move the print head back. And it's just kind of, it's kind of stuck. That's why it's these two things. I have a call from Wisconsin. No doubt it's a sales call. I hope it's not one of my students. But then again, all of my students this semester are in this class right now. Why would they be calling me during class? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, and so what it does is it says, take these characters, L-E-T, and then put on the special, the ampersand is concatenation, just says glue this thing together. Put on these special characters that will let this do a kind of a wide feed in the carriage return, kind of go back down to the, to, the, to the next, so it'd be a new line. And then we're starting a new collection of characters. And it has some spaces, and it says source equals web page, web contents. And then it gets to that quote right there. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing. So what should we expect this to mean right up to here? Collection of characters. Starts with quote. It's got a bunch of characters. Ends with another quote. But what would happen if I wanted to put a quote inside of a quote terminated string? What if I actually wanted to have a quote inside that collection of characters? What would I do? Okay, so I could end the quote, and then I could do something similar to this, where I say, you know, go get the character code that will tell it what the quote is. But it's so common to want to put a quote inside, the, inside of a quote terminated string that the makers of BASIC in the 1970s said, let's just make a little trick. If you want to put a quote inside of a quote terminated string, just put two of them. And we'll, and we'll know that you just mean a quote inside the string. I gotta tell you folks, it's weird, but that's what it does. The interpreter comes along right here, it's coming along, and it goes, okay, a bunch of characters inside my terminated string, and it gets to this quote, and it goes, aha, end of the string. I think, let's just peek ahead and see what the next character is. Ah! Next character's a quote too. That's not the end of the string, that's just a quote inside the string. <sighs> the old web query wizard didn't record it this, this way. It was so much better to work with, you know, on the second day of class. Stick with me, folks. So we're coming along right here, and it gets to this one, and it goes, aha, the end of the string. Wait, it goes, aha, the end of the string. Wait, let me peek ahead. Is it the end of the string? No. Not really. Tricked you. And then it goes along, and it goes, aha, the end of the string. Is it? Yeah, that's the end of the string, literal. So these little quotes right here, that's just the little trick that says, hey, that's just a quote inside the string. And you can see what it's saying is web contents, and then in quotes it has the URL. That's ultimately what it has to evaluate to. I'm going to highlight over this part here, L-U-V. Don't delete it. Don't do anything. <laughs> Think you know what's happening. Stand by. Yeah? If you have quote inside quotes inside of string, these billion quotation marks. If you add two, you're like, quote inside quotes. We're going to put some more quotes in here. That'll make you happy. 
<laughs> Here's what I want to do now. Right where it says LUV, I got this whole, I got this whole long string, but right exactly where it says LUV, I've got that, I've got that highlighted. I now want to essentially cut this apart. I want this one long string literal into two string literals. And so what am I going to need to put here to finish the first, the first string literal? What do I got to put here? I got to put a quote there. What do I have to put right here? Another quote. And so I've got LUV highlighted. And without even thinking, I'm just going to press the quote key twice. Quote, quote. Shift, quote, quote. Make sure it's a double quote. Quote, quote. Whoa. There's like four quotes in a row there. I'm going to go back. So I'm in between the two that I just put in there, and I'm going to put in two ampersand symbols. And now I'm just going to, now I'm going to space over between these. So now I've, I've, I've terminated that first string. Put in a couple of quotes. I started up the next string. And now I can put something in the middle of here that's going to be evaluated, that, that, that Excel will actually go and figure out what does it really mean. And I'm going to, comp I'm going to compose this URL here with the values. Let me go figure out. Don't put in LUV. Put in AAPL or GOOG or one of the other ticker symbols. So where is the ticker symbol that I want to put in here? Active it's in the active cell. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's the name of an object. That's a way for me to refer to a range is active cell. That's the object. I want a property. Which property do I want? Do I want the address, value. the formula? I want, the, I want the, the, the value. That's the French spelling. Active cell is the object. It identifies a particular cell on a particular sheet. Whatever sheet is active, whatever cell has the active, the current cell indicator, that is the active cell. There's only one active cell in the workbook at a time, period. So it's whatever the active cell is. And then I want the value, right? There's lots of properties of a cell. Value is what I'm after. Yama. Okay, that's all. That's the only change I have to make here. It was kind of a long way to get there. We highlighted LUV, put in two quotes, and then between those we put in two ampersands, and then between that we put what we wanted to evaluate. The whole point is we don't, we don't want the URL to say active cell in it. We've got to tell it, go figure out what the active cell is and put the characters that are from the, the value of the active cell. Whew. Now, this line here, instead of creating a new query, it's going to find the existing query, the one called table one, and it is going to change the formula for that query to include the ticker symbol from the active cell. Question? Um, on the first line there, you've got the line break. Yes. Where could you put a line break in the second line there? Oh, really? Good question. Where could I put a line break? And the answer is anywhere except in the middle of a string. And so let's go ahead and break it down. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a line break here. And this string ends right here. So I don't want to put it in the middle of the string, but as long as I'm outside the middle of the string, I can just put a bunch of line breaks in here after the carriage return 10. You don't have to do this, folks. But if you put space underscore, as long as it's not inside of the, the, the quotes, you could bring this all down so that it... Yeah, and this one's kind of tough because it's, it's pretty long. I think I'm going to, I'm going to stop there. But I could take this long line, I could bring it back down so we could see it all at once. And it is at least, probably at least helpful to be able to see all of this part onto the screen at one time. Whew. Okay. We spent a long time on that first line. What does this one do? What do you think? Yeah, there's, a, there's an object. What's the object here? Sheets. It's a collection of all the sheets in the workbook. What's, then we have dot add. What's add? It's a method. We're telling the collection of sheets to do something it knows how to do. What? To make a new sheet. Do we want to make a new sheet? No. no. So we delete that. Folks, probably while you're getting started at this, you're probably not so certain about what you want to keep around and not keep around. Instead of deleting it, I'm going to put it, make, turn it into a comment. Single quote at the beginning of the line. That'll just say, hey, disable this line. Which is not for the interpreter to understand. All right. This next part is hideous. Can I fit it all? I can fit it all on. So here's the idea. Sometimes what we say is, I think we mentioned this last time we were together, the with structure. With some object and with. With, we're adding a new list object onto the active sheet. That's like a little table. You know how it's cell and table? It's actually in code. It's called a list object. We're adding a new list object, and we're setting up all these properties of it. 
This list object, you might know, notice, is bound onto table one. The, the, where it gets its data is select everything out of table one. This is bound onto that query. Table one is the query that we just built up here. And so this existing sheet is already bound to that query. If we update that query, if we refresh that query, this table is going to get the new data in it automatically. We don't have to create a new list. That's a couple things we could do. We could delete the list and recreate it, or we could just let it be. Uh, you know what, this is too much to comment out. I mean, I could comment it out. That'd take a while. I'm going to delete this part. From the width to the end width, we don't need to create that again. So you may remember the next thing that we did was we did to refresh that query. Because I'd done this a couple of times before, and I knew I didn't want to create the query, I just wanted to refresh it. So I clicked refresh, right click and chose refresh, and here's the line. It says, from whatever cell is selected. I'm not sure that we have, I'm not, I'm not positive that we're going to have the right cell selected uh, when we get here. Question? Yeah. So I don't know if it matters, but so where you said selection, not list, object, mine has the next line range, and then like table one, that's above it. Is that just yeah. because I did something a little bit differently out of order? I have that too. I have that too. Yeah, I let me see what it's doing. So this is selecting. Oh, yeah. That's so interesting. I'm not sure why I might record this way. This is me selecting the header of column two in that table. That's exactly what I want to have happen first. So if it isn't that way, we're going to make it that way. Because what, we, what I did, so strange. Hmm. I don't think I did that out of order, but maybe I did. We have it on video. We could go and look. So this, this is what we want to do. We want to select that cell, and then we want to refresh. Because it's refreshing based on what's selected. Say, so look at this, whatever's selected. Behind that, there must be a list object. And that's got a query table, and we're going to refresh it. Oh, you know what? I did it twice. That was the problem. I did it twice. So I don't need this second one here. <coughs> Okay, then I selected sheet two and I changed the name to web query. Do we need this stuff around here? No, because it's already named. I don't need that. I'll delete that. Then I select B4 and I copy. So far, so good. Presumably B4 is where the price range ratio is. Yep. Going back to your, your refresh there, uh, selection list object, query table, refresh background query, and it equals false. Yes. Nope, let me tell you what this says. So let's look at the object. So selection, that identifies an object. There's a property of this object called list object. It is whatever list object might be behind this particular cell. And so that's a property, but it is also an object. So it has a property called query table. That list object has a query table property. It's also an object, so it has a property called refresh. I'm sorry, it has a method called refresh. It's instruction. That, that query table knows how to refresh itself. I'm telling, go refresh yourself. Now, I'm giving it some information about how to refresh itself. So there's no dot there, right? There's a space. This now then is a parameter that I'm giving to the method that tells it, refresh yourself in a certain way. How are you going to refresh yourself? You're going to refresh yourself such that it's not a background query. The background query is false. If it was a background query, if it refreshed itself with background query true, we would say it would go, great, I'm refreshing myself. It may take a few seconds or maybe a minute for that data to come back from the server. If it's a background query, the code continues to run while that data, while we're waiting for that data to come in. If we set the background query to false, as we've done here, it says stop, stop this VBA until this query is done. And that's what we want. We've got to wait for that data to come in because we're getting ready to copy it. So that's what the background query is doing. Yep? Is there a way to copy, like, copy blank values and then paste it? If those were any code under 180. Oh, you, worse. The question is, so if, so if you had this as true, would it just, when you come down here and you copy, you select before and then copy it, would it just get a blank value? No, what would it get? Yeah. It would get the data that was there from the last time you ran the query. 
Yeah, that would be, ooh, you don't want that. Why did you get rid of the selecting sheet two? Because I don't think it's selected. We named it. So we renamed it to uh, web, query. web query two. Oh, but you're right. We're going to need to activate it. Good. Yeah. Right. So we were select. Yeah, we're not select. You're right. So do we have another? Okay. So here's sheets web query select. But good point. We're going to need to have that way up here too. I just copied that. And we need to do that before, sometime before, oh, just before we do this select. Could happen anywhere. Could happen at the very top. I put it here. That's a fine place. So we're sure that we've got the web query sheet selected. Now we've got B2 selected. Now we're copying B2. It turns out, folks, you don't really have to select it so you can copy it. You can just refer to it and copy it. The whole idea here is that to try to do as little as possible after we've recorded it to get this thing going. And it's already been quite a bit of work. So we're going to move on. So then we select sheet one. Here's where we did that relative reference. It says from the active cell, I want you to offset zero rows in one column. Down, down zero and over one. That's right, because we're on the ticker symbol, move over one. This next thing here, how I wish it didn't record this. Range A1.select has nothing to do with, with, with cell A1. What this lets us do is that if I, wanted to, if I wanted to offset a certain number of cells and then select a multi-cell range, this says pretend that whatever I referred to up to this point is the, active, is the upper left-hand corner of the sheet and then select a range relative to that. We've got like a minute to go, so what you want to do is just kind of ignore that A1. And in your mind say, that we're not talking about A1, there's something, something weird going on there, we'll talk about it later, and that's okay. In fact, I could delete that and it would work just fine. You can leave it in there. We've got another one, I think, that has it. Then we paste. We come out of cut copy mode, which is, you know, when you press Control-C, you get the little flashing lights around your thing you've copied. That takes us out of that. We go back to the web query sheet. We offset. We're now going down one. Interesting. It's giving that reference in the data that it's copied, and that's all right. We then copy. We go back to sheet one. We offset again. We paste, and then we offset one more time. That's the end. We offset going down one row, back two columns, and select. Wow, we had to change quite a bit of stuff here. We changed this initial thing from a create to a modify. We got rid of the table, but I think that's it. I think this will do what we wanted it to do. I should now be able to come here to Google and press Control Shift S, and it should pull in data for Google. Someday. Good thing we didn't do a background query. We had no hope of getting it. It's waiting for that query to refresh, and then it'll pull it in. Okay. So it looks like that worked. It's working. Hopefully, it'll go all the way through. That's it for today. Quick questions. Are we supposed to read the textbook? Are you supposed to read the textbook? That's a good question. The answer is you'll be better at this if you read the textbook. Um, I, I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire. It's not going to be like you come in. There's going to be a quiz in the textbook. So if you think you can get by without reading it, you don't want to read it. That's the way I did school. That's okay. With it. Yep. Um, so generally. Well, I, it's good to know all this and everything, but do you think it would be easier to just maybe, like, if there's a mistake, kind of just re-record it? I guess it's good to learn all this, obviously, but sometimes I feel like I could, you could maybe just re-record it and do it a different way a little bit, and it would be quicker. Yeah, so could you just re-record it? And the answer is, yeah, if you made a mistake, you might just re-record. But this stuff that we did here, you can't record it. Uh, you, you, the old web query, you could record yourself editing a query. It would give you good code. This new web query wizard, you record yourself editing it, it gives you no code. So yeah, it's a little bit of work to go through here, but you'll have this video, you can go through it, and this is the heart of what the first project is. Uh, we've got a little more coding to do here, we'll pick that up on this example when we get together on Wednesday. Thanks for coming, class dismissed. Let me get this.